Hello everyone, Donna Don back with the uh, next progress report on Workhorse Air. Alright, my last video you've seen I was working on the fuel system. So I now have the fuel system plumbed from the firewall forward. Um, it's plumbed back to the tank, but I just got to make that plate for the bottom of the tank. So let me show you what I got down here. This time I got my light. So I'll set that up here so you can see down in there. All right, there's the the fuel lines coming out of the bulkhead down into the inlet of the filter. And there's my new uh, T-fitting. And then I plumbed in that drain valve I showed you the last time. So if you can see that now, just a uh, hard line. And I ended up going out to this side um, because if I tried to use... Uh, if I put the T the other way, so the line came across here, it's going to get into the area. You can see that. Uh, if I put that T pointing this way instead of pointing down, it would bring it out over here, and it would possibly take away some more clearance for the oil tank. So, and what I ended up doing here is I took um, what they call a rib nut and put a rib nut. Let me set this on the floor so it'll point up enough to give me some light. This is a um, rib nut in the stainless steel. I even It's a steel one, so I even went up in behind it with a washer. I drilled a hole, pushed a rib nut in there, put a washer behind it, and then I crunched it up. Uh, that's a permanent blind hole now, based on that blind hole, it's open. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> that rib nut is attached to this stainless piece, and it's probably squeezed into the plywood behind it as well. So then just screw into that so it's got a nice solid solid connection there just barely make out it kind of looks like a washer on the back side of that spacer a little bit of a shiny area but that was a simple installation so that's probably a little better if I just move this thing up out of the way <coughs> so well, that pretty much does it for the fuel system oh my god I've been cutting aluminum all day today on the lathe Again, if you can see, there's a, that nice fuel pump. I'm going to buy one of those for the Mustang project. Because that is a nice nice filter for only 20 bucks. I would say it come with them three different size fittings. All right, so, uh, so the fuel system is done all the way up through to here. Um, again, the fuel lines right there goes to the tank as soon as I can get a piece of aluminum. I did go out, had to do some parts shopping, and I ended up buying... Uh, the fittings I needed to finish that off. I found a uh, um, choke cable that'll work. It's a six footer, so that'll come through here and uh, down into here to, to work this uh, mixture control over here on this side. After I, and I was looking at air filters. I found a, um, a seven inch diameter air filter for like a Briggs and Stratton engine, like a big twin or something. Two inches tall, seven inches in diameter. And the ones I found on eBay are six and three eighths diameter, but two and a half inches tall. So I'll do the math and see what the square inch area of the both of them are, and see if they'll be big enough to use in this application, or if it's going to be a little restrictive. Uh, one way to tell is um, put a sensor in the intake and measure the the map sensor to see if there's a a vacuum with and without the filter on. If the filter becomes a restriction, um, there's no play. I don't want to drill any holes into this throttle body, but you can kind of tap into the intake manifold and see how much vacuum it's pulling with the thing at like wide open throttle, and then put the filter on and off, and you'd be able to see a difference in the map pressure, manifold pressure. But I'll do some research on those. So um, what I ended up doing is. I decided to get rid of the tank that went on here. I think we can probably see okay without this for right now. That uh, tank with the cap on it. I took and cut the cap off. And set it. Here it is. I put it in the lathe and I turned it down where it was welded on. So I've got it ready to weld back onto something else. Um, but that may be um, a separate smaller tank, maybe a little higher may even be somewhere up front here where I can come out of this fitting. I have to redo this fitting anyway. 
because it's kind of coming back and I didn't realize it's going to be in the way this hose will fit through here. Uh, it would still work, but I think it would actually look better, work better, if it just came through here. So, big hands, small holes, bring it out through there, and then it's just a straight shot to here. So I made this nipple today. The old nipple didn't have this barb on it because that can slipped on it and had two O-rings to seal it. Um, and looking at the old one, it had chatter marks on it where the thing was vibrating and chattering. So eventually those O-rings probably would have failed. So this is going to go to a straight hose here to here. And then that's where the other thing. Now I may end up putting a T in here so I can go to a separate header tank with a cap, with that cap assembly. This is just the bung. And this is the actual, the actual cap. And then that piece that just went flying is the little drain tube for the uh, overflow cap uh, pops from pressure. It'll, this would be vented overboard. So, so I made this one um, yesterday and I finished threading it this morning. So uh, that's done. I cut the top of this open to get access to it. So now I have access to both these lines through here. So that's done. I made that this morning. And then my other dilemma, so that side is done as far as, well, I'm going to make a new new one of these for the other side, a uh, different angle. <laughs> I've already measured it all up and got it ready. So what i got to do now is, this is the original, i got to make one more for down here. And then today, I spent a lot of time today making this. So that started out as that big old chunk of aluminum that I used to make, um, what did I make with that? Can you remember? It's been all oh, those uh, bottom motor mounts. But this is the line coming from the bottom on the other side. Right there. That line on the bottom. That blue hose and it ties into a black straight piece. And that's going to hook up to there. And then this will have just an elbow connecting these together, inch and a half. And then this one inch hose will connect to the fitting here. And I have to make a new one like this with the little barb on the end. So, and then a short piece of hose there. And then this will tie straight into there. Sorry. And then uh, a 90 to there. And then this one will go into whatever I make for a little tank. So, that took some doing, let me tell you. I spent probably four or five hours on this thing. I want to cut these corners off, but I can't um, because of this plate. It's not flush with the deck, and if you try to put this in there, it teeter totters too much. So I was going to use a saw and hack these off at a 45. So I just hit them on the uh, sander, disc sander over there a little bit. But it started out as this a piece of this. All it was a chunk of that. This is some of the chunk it cut off. This is pieces that were cut off of it to make this. Um, these were just um, like uh, corner pieces that were cut out of here just to take away a lot of the machine work. But the mosquitoes are out. So, so that's done, ready to go. So that's what I did uh, yesterday and today. Uh, yesterday I worked on, got the fuel system finished. Oh, um, and then somebody in the comments, thank you for making a suggestion. How about drilling and tapping and putting the set screw in there? Well, these are eighth-inch pipe thread. I tell you what, it took a while to find those. I mean, nobody carries that stuff anymore. I got aluminum filings all down the back of my neck. Um, but it was perfect. All I had to do was run the eighth-inch pipe tap in there, and I run it in, put such screw in, or the plug, took it out, and kept tapping it till I got it so it was just slightly recessed. And then I used the red Loctite. Ugh, I feel mosquitoes crawling around. <laughs> and and then the other side, same way. As you notice. This was the valve cover over there. So I switched them to put this more towards the back. This is the right side for this, uh, the correct side for this anyway. The original oil fill was on this side of the motor. I switched them around to put these up front to tie into all the vacuum lines up front. So, so that's done. So that's done. As you can see, I put them through the glass beater and blasted them clean. So now. I'll go uh, find me a, an elbow to put on there, it's an inch and a half. I could buy one like this or I can go to the parts store and find a short piece of radiator hose, inch and a half, and just lop it off. But I don't have a chunk for that. So, so all i got to do is make one more of these.
go down there. Uh, the tough part's going to be getting the other one off. It's, it's kind of down in there, and I don't know if it'll come up high enough to get to the clamp. But i got to get that one off in order to make a new one of these. So I was able to do all the threading and everything on that. So if I made an even bigger mess. Uh, well, I think that's all I'm going to do. I want to kind of keep this one a little short tonight. Wife's got dinner already started. So it's not going to take long. So this is where I make them fittings out of. So one more of those, and then everything will be hose clamped. The top ones, it was already unhooked up, and I took back off. So I think that's all I got done. Uh, somebody made a comment about these silicone tubes, saying that you can't use them for fuel. They're not compatible with fuel. I was like, I'd never heard such a thing. So I did a little research before I commented back to them. And it turns out they say silicone is porous. Now this is four layers of silicone. It's like a tape because it's all wrapped molded somehow, but there's reinforcement fibers in them. Um, do I have a piece set in here? Yeah, right here. So, but there's four layers of uh, fibers in there. And then researching, this inner lining I don't think is silicone. It's a different type of rubber. So that inner lining, I'm going to do some more research to find out, but um, I think that inner lining may may not be silicone, it may be. They do make a liner with a different material, so it is compatible with fuel, but generally on a turbo, they're going to see fuel regardless. Even if they don't have fuel in them, they're going to see fuel because um, you get reversion back through the intake system, so the fuel bouncing back and forth between the valve and the carb or the throttle body, on a, even on a fuel injection car, uh, fuel can still get up into some of this stuff. But it's not, you're not running full volume of fuel through this thing. It's, you know, you got to remember it's 14 parts air to one part fuel. So I don't, I don't think I'll ever have a problem with it. But, but what I can do is just take a chunk of this, throw it in gas, and it's not going to do anything to it, I guarantee you. All right, I think that's all I wanted to get done today. Um, i got to go back to work tomorrow. But the fuel system's finished other than wiring up the pump. Um, Still need I mark this where I'm going to cut a wedge off here and weld a patch on it to take them corners down and then get the, uh, get the tube cut and welded on there now. But like I said, now that this is on there, most of this stuff's going to come together a lot faster. So, all right, I think that's going to do her. I don't think I had any more questions that I wanted to mention, but I uh, appreciate people do leaving those uh, questions, and I never even thought about that. I'm so used to just cutting stuff and welding it, I didn't even think about that. And the nice thing with this is I can take those out in the future if I ever need to go back to this system or for some reason I need a vent. I, those will come out. They're just uh, red Loctite. You get with a torch, they'll come right out so I can use them. they just, you know, just sticking up is all. Okay, everyone, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, as always, appreciate everybody taking the time to watch my videos. Feel free to leave any comments, questions, concerns, and I appreciate the comments that people are leaving and the ideas. They do help, and I do read them. So, like I said, as I read your comment, I always give a, a thumbs up uh, on your post, so at least you know that somebody gave you a thumbs up. But if you go through and look at them all, and they all got thumbs up, that's because I did it. All right, that's going to do it, everyone. I will probably see you guys again this weekend. Um, battery's getting low, so um, I'll be back at it uh, Saturday, maybe tomorrow morning, tomorrow night I'll work on it some more, so. Okay, everyone, that's going to do it, and I will see you guys again next weekend. So for now, this is Diner.out.